It's always fun to see a player in professional sports clearly playing out of position. While these moments almost always occur during a blowout or during an all-star game, it's something that fans definitely get a kick out of. But what happens when you're in the middle of a meaningful game and forced to play a guy out of position? This is where the Green Bay Packers found themselves during week 6 of the 2016 season. Entering that 2016 season, the Packers looked pretty set at the running back position. Eddie Lacy was entering his fourth season, he was very durable at that point, and had success early in his NFL career. His backup James Starks was entering his seventh season, and while Starks had not missed a game in the previous two years, he did deal with injuries early in his career. The season started out normal, the Packers were 3-1, and one, and the offense was relatively healthy. But all of that changed on a Sunday afternoon versus the Dallas Cowboys. Starting running back Eddie Lacy suffered an ankle injury in the beginning of the second half, and while the initial concern was not too high, it was an injury that ended up requiring surgery and sidelined him for the rest of the season. In the same game, their backup running back James Starks sustained a knee injury that was expected to keep him sidelined for about a month. He did eventually come back four games later just to get hurt again, but this time in a car accident which caused a concussion, this ultimately putting an end to his 2016 season. Okay, so now who do the Packers have to play running back? Well, there was Don Jackson, an undrafted free agent that was on the Packers practice squad. Their other options? Well, there was fullback Aaron Ripkowski. There were two wide receivers. Randall Cobb and Ty Montgomery who have had some experience taking handoffs. The worst part of all was that week 7 was a quick turnaround for the Packers as they played on Thursday night football versus the Bears. Not an ideal time to have just 4 days to prepare. Their practice squad running back Don Jackson was promoted from the practice squad but he only lasted 2 carries before leaving with an injured hand. That left the backfield to Ty Montgomery, Aaron Ripkowski, and Randall Cobb. And once again none of these guys were actual running backs. The majority of the work went to Ty Montgomery. A second year wide receiver and former third round pick, Montgomery had not done much so far in his one and a half years in the NFL. He was mostly a backup receiver behind names like Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, and a young Devontae Adams. The Packers definitely had a talented receiver core. He began the 2016 season as a kick returner and wide receiver depth piece, but then opportunity came knocking. During his time at Stanford, Montgomery was a bit of a hybrid player and he did run the ball 23 times during his senior year. While he was drafted to be a wide receiver and mostly a kick returner once again, the Packers really had no other choice. In his first game at running back, Montgomery actually excelled, running 9 times for 60 yards on the ground and added 10 catches for 66 yards as a receiver. With this game being on national TV, the world got to see themselves who Ty Montgomery was. He was definitely not just some death piece return guy, he was more than that. Unfortunately, he had to miss the next game due to his complications with sickle cell trait, but after that, he did not miss a game the rest of the year and was really effective. Throughout the remainder of the season, the Packers did bring in some other veteran running backs like Niall Davis, the former Chiefs backup, and Kristen Michael, the former Seahawk. But by season's end, Montgomery actually led the team in carries and rushing yards. His true breakout game came against the Bears once again, this time in week 15. He racked up a career-high 162 rushing yards on a career-high 16 carries. He also scored two touchdowns. Montgomery helped Green Bay reach reached the NFC Championship game that year, scoring two touchdowns versus the Cowboys in the divisional round, but unfortunately a bid to the Super Bowl came up short after a loss to the Falcons. No running back with at least 100 touches in 2016 was more difficult to get to the ground than Ty Montgomery of the Green Bay Packers. According to Pro Football Focus, Montgomery was 2016's leader in elusive rating, a metric that uses broken tackles and yards after contact to calculate a running back's ability to create, beyond the point of being helped by his block. It was a really good yet unexpected season from the 23 year old quote unquote receiver. The question now was would this be his role moving forward or would the Packers actually put him back to wide receiver, his original position. The team moved on from Eddie Lacy who went to the Seahawks and James Starks was released as well. The following NFL draft did add some concern for Montgomery's running back status as the Packers drafted three running backs in 2017 including Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. However, Packers head coach Mike McCarthy reassured that Montgomery would still be the team's starting running back. And actually, he was not lying. In Green Bay's first three games of 2017, Montgomery was the clear starting running back but wasn't too efficient, only averaging slightly over three yards per carry. He did score three touchdowns in three games and even had 18 receptions, but once again, he was not all that efficient. Unfortunately, this was pretty much the end to Montgomery's peak as a valuable skill position player in the NFL. He suffered broken ribs in week four, and sadly, this injury lingered the entire season. He came 
came back and played in four games before being shut down by the Packers for the rest of the season due to his ribs injury and a wrist injury. Green Bay had missed the playoffs that year anyway as Aaron Rodgers was limited to seven starts with a broken collarbone. In 2018, Montgomery spent the year as a backup option to Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. To make matters worse, Montgomery had a crucial error returning a kickoff in week eight, which ended up costing the Packers the game. Just two days after that mistake, Montgomery was traded to the Baltimore Ravens. Green Bay only took a seventh round pick in return, but Montgomery had a chance to play alongside electric rookie Lamar Jackson. In half a season in Baltimore, he only had a couple of decent games, but wasn't that much of an impact. After that, he bounced around from the Jets in 2019, the Saints in 2020 and 21, and has been a member of the Patriots now the past two seasons. He doesn't get many carries anymore and is not the exciting featured back that we briefly saw in Green Bay, but he's still a useful NFL player and has carved out a nine-year NFL career, and it's still not over. As for the Packers, they eventually found their backs. Aaron Jones turned into a star once Montgomery was traded, and Jamal Williams turned into one of the better backups in the league. It didn't last long, but the Montgomery starting running back era was really fun. It even caused massive controversy in fantasy football. Montgomery fantasy managers were demanding him to be wide receiver and running back eligible. It took some time, but ultimately his position was switched to running back, and even on some platforms, he was given wide receiver and running back eligibility. It's not as cool today because in 2021, rules were made that any player can wear any number. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater wears number 50, Roquan Smith wears number zero, T Higgins wears number five. But back in 2016, when Montgomery made the position switch, running backs were only allowed to have a number between 20 and 49. So to see a running back wear number 88, which was Montgomery's number as a receiver, was something out of the ordinary and really unique. But as I said, nowadays it doesn't matter because you can wear whatever number you want. But back then in 2016, it was pretty awesome. So that's the story of what happened to the 2016 Green Bay Packers when they lost all their running backs in one game. It was still really impressive despite that, that they made the NFC Championship game. Imagine if that team went on to win the Super Bowl? That would have really boosted the running backs don't matter narrative. It was fun to go back and relive this happening. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll talk to you guys next time.